My name is Jeffrey Black. Um, my son Alexander Black um, was a freshman here at Signature School last year. Um, he really enjoyed the challenges school provided. He excelled at his subjects and obtained an A in every class. He had every intention of attending this year and was looking forward to the new school year. Over the summer, he was assigned a summer reading assignment for his language class. Upon, up, up, upon, upon obtaining the book, A Long Way Gone, Memories of a Boy Soldier, we began to read through it as a family. Upon coming across some of the graphic material, both violent and sexual in nature, our son had some concerns with the part of the content. In our religion, we believe that we should not be exposed to such material in all aspects of our life. Although I prefer not to read these or expose you to the material so that you may better understand our objections, some of the passages in the book include the following. On page 12, in the back seat of the van were three more dead bodies, two girls and a boy, and their blood was all over the seats and ceiling of the van. Page 13, the last casualty that we saw that evening was a woman who carried her baby on her back. Blood was running down her dress and dripping from her, making a trail. Her child had been shot dead as she ran for her life. Luckily for her, the bullet didn't go through the baby's body. When she stopped as we stood, where we stood, she sat on the ground and removed the child. It was a girl, and her eyes were still open with an interrupted, innocent smile on her face. The bullets could be seen sticking out just a bit in the baby's body, and she was swelling. Page 18, their arms and legs were missing. Their intestines spill out through the bullet holes in their stomachs. Brain matter comes out of their noses and ears. The flies are so excited and intoxicated that they fall on the pools of blood and die. Page 19, we opened fire until the last living being in the group, other group fell to the ground. We walked toward the dead bodies, giving each other high fives. The group also consisted of young boys like us, but we didn't care about them. We took their ammunition, sat on their bodies, and started eating the cooked food they didn't carry. All around us, flesh blood, blood leaked from their bullet holes in their bodies. <coughs> Page 27, on the veranda, we saw an old man sitting in a chair as if asleep. There were bullet holes in his forehead, and underneath the stoop lay the bodies of two men whose genitals, limbs, and hands had been chopped off by a machete and were on top of the ground next to their, their piled body parts. Page 49. I had seen heads cut off by machete, smashed by cement bricks, and rivers filled with so much blood that the water had ceased flowing. Page 80. Saadi sat in the attic holding his breath and listening to the wailing of his sisters as rebels raped them. His father shouted at them to stop, and one of the rebels hit him with the butt of his gun. Saidu's mother cried and apologized to her daughters for having brought them into this world to be a victim of such madness. After the rebels had raped the sisters over and over, they bundled the family's property and made the father and mother carry it. The village, they took the, girl, the three girls with them. Page 94, they were on fire and ran up and down the village, slamming themselves against everything in the way and going back in the other direction to the same. The women fell and stopped moving. The child gave a loud screech and sat next to a tree. He stopped moving. More than 20 people lay face down on the earth. They were lined up and blood still pouring out of their bullet wounds. A stream of it had begun running along the ground, making its way under each body. Page 96, they were giving each other high fives. They had blood on their clothes and one of them carried the head of a man, which he held by the hair. Mr. Black, that's the three minutes. Uh, thank you. No, I, I think I, I should have a little bit more time than that. So I, I have Actually, some other comments that Actually, are- Actually, there is no provision in the Kenya statute to have uh, speakers from outside at the meeting. You're, you're welcome to attend the meeting and take notes and hear everything we have to say. But, but I have not gotten to the point of my argument. I think you could address it in, in a couple more minutes. I appreciate we, it. We, we're all working people. I, I understand that, but we've taken an hour and 45 minutes discovering little details of this. This is a very important topic that is associated with my child. And I feel you have press here that want to hear my side of the story. And I think that you need to allow the other side of the story. And I think that the board deserves the chance to hear my side of the story. I have talked to you directly and Mrs. Hitchcock directly. And regardless of whether you've shared your opinions with them, the board has not had a chance to hear my opinion. And I would like to finish my statement. It is another page or so. And I appreciate if you'd let me finish the statement. I think I've heard enough of the direct quotes if you have Okay, that's fine. I, I won't do any more quotes other than the last one talking about forcing sons to have intercourse with their mother, hacking new baby boys Mr. in half. Black. Okay. Um, these are only a few of the experts I found in the first half of the book. I understand the school's desire to have a global focus. However, there are many other great works of literature that can achieve this goal without the graphic violence and sex described in this book. 
Due to our religious beliefs, our son Alex contacted the teacher to request a different assignment. The teacher refused to provide a different assignment and referred us to the principal, Jean Hitchcock, for further questions. In phone conversations that both my wife and I had separate with Mrs. Hitchcock, she informed us that the school would not allow for a substitute assignment. She also suggested almost immediately in every conversation that the only solution for us was to withdraw our son from the school. In addition, we emailed the school board president, Mr. Cook, to address the situation. His response was rather unsympathetic to the situation and compared our objection on more religious grounds to that of a student or parents having difficulty completing a math or science problem. This comparison is completely inaccurate and inappropriate to make. Mr. Cook also requested that we draw our son from the school. In addition, as we tried to obtain information... It was, it was a suggestion. It wasn't a request. There are many... I have a quote that says you request. We respect the request that you withdraw from the senior school. In addition, as we tried to obtain information regarding if our son would be penalized in his class grade for his refusal to complete the assignment, Mrs. Hitchcock requested that we no longer contact the teacher directly. When pressing Mrs. Hitchcock directly for answers to our questions, she refused to answer and cut off all contact. As you, for the record, I had addressed all your questions. And no, I had specific I questions. I had specific questions about whether he would be penalized, and you never answered those. As you can expect, the immediate request from both the principal and the school board president that we withdraw our son from the school rather than they work with us to find a solution was quite surprising. We as parents proposed multiple solutions, including the possibility of providing at our own cost an independent class that would fulfill the requirements of this subject. In all cases, Mrs. Hitchcock refused and continued to state that we should withdraw our son if we disagree. We have had a wonderful experience with the school in our son's first year here and sincerely hoped that he continue his education at this great institution. Alex had made many friends here and has enjoyed association with students that share his thirst of knowledge and hard work. The school prides itself in being one of the top schools and the student body represents a large diversity of the community, the country, and the world. In order to keep those high accolades, this school should represent the honors and honor the traditions, values, and religions of that great diversity. Regardless of whether you agree with me personally on my objections, this material based on more religious grounds. I hope and expect that you as a board would agree that students and parents have the ability to object based upon their moral and religious beliefs, especially if an alternative can be provided in a way that does not disrupt the teachings of the students. Solutions which we have proposed may able to accomplish this, all of which have been rejected. Signature School receives both federal and How state grants. Have I have two more paragraphs. As the signature school receives both federal and state tax money. As such, as stated in the school's charter, it is required to uphold the Constitution. The First Amendment of the Constitution states that government should not prohib prohibit the free exercise of religion. In not allowing for our son an alternate assignment or attend an alternate class, the school, as a branch of the government, is prohibiting our son's free exercise of religion. The school has also not shown a compelling interest to, comp to not comply with our simple request. Many teachers and school administrators often complain that parents are not involved enough in their child's education. However, as appears by this situation, teachers and administrators of this school only want parents' involvement if they agree with their ideals and political alignment. We have spoken to several other parents of students at Signature who also agree that parents should have the right to request an alternate assignment if they find the material objectionable. I am sure as we continue to talk to other parents, we will find many more that agree. Therefore, on behalf of my son, my family, current and future students and parents, I respect the request that the board reconsider the position on this subject. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I have read all the emails, I think. Uh, I read a bunch of emails, I think we read all of them. So it's not like we're ignoring it. I've, I've given a lot of thought to the issue over the last few days. Um, the First Amendment, though, let's, let's get that stated correctly. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Congress. Congress. Good. Anything else, Bill? 